froze on me. God damn it, man. You fucking piece of shit. And we're back again. We're back again, guys. Today in this video, we're gonna be uh, taking the BNR S4 Turbo out of the car. We're gonna be clocking the compressor housing downwards, and we're gonna be installing the JBR under out piping kit. So the reason why we're going with the underwrap piping kit is because we've noticed that uh, these pipes get a lot of heat soak in them. And you'll notice this pipe is right next to the exhaust manifold and the pipe running down is right in between the radiator. So it's absorbing a lot of heat and boost air temperatures haven't really improved ever since we've gone with the front mount intercooler setup. Uh, we're thinking possibly of wrapping the exhaust manifold with some of that uh, header wrap. What do you guys think? Do you guys think we should, you know, go for form over function? Because it looks so good right now without it wrapped. Or should we go ahead and wrap it? I'm not too sure. Take these off. Good thing it fell. First one lost of the night. You got a flash that night? Oh, you found it? Very yeah, good. Now, the under up piping is also a shorter path as compared to uh, this path. Uh, also, it's going to be under and to the side of the engine, so the pipes are going to get less heat soaked. So, our boost air temperature should hopefully be nice and cool. Cool. Take this little vacuum line off here. This is connected to the top of the vented catch can for extra vacuum. Did you fart? No, 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 I would have told you. I think I just stink in general. Is there a dead animal in here? Do you actually smell something in there? Maybe it's, maybe it's just me. Actually, it does smell pretty bad in there. Maybe When's the last time you washed your work clothes, man? <laughs> I haven't washed these. <laughs> Been wearing these since yesterday. I've sweated in them, cried in them. No, I'm going to be crying in them once we get this job started. Boom! That's not going back in. Put this to a safe location. Yeah, hey, I'll buy that off you. I can make a rocket stove out of that. And we gotta take the battery out completely so we can remove the intake separated from the turbo. The more you practice taking things apart, the faster you'll do it. And the more your fasteners just don't fasten anymore. Also, we found a crack in the coolant overflow tank, so. Yeah, right at the top there. We probably tried to put some super glue on there. It likes to hiss when uh, the coolant's hot, so. Definitely there's a, some sort of pressure leak, so that has to be replaced. I gotta re that cracks, you're gonna piss coolant everywhere. Eventually. Eventually. I gotta replace that whole coolant reservoir now. That is the first time I've done a maintenance mod. So, Eric decided to come over one day, ask me if I had a stubby 14. I didn't, so he inquired about turning this into a stubby 13, 14. And uh, we did. Then I realized I need a long 14. So we welded it back together. And that, my friends, is the benefit of buying cheap, cheap tools. You can modify them, and you don't break a sweat. Na 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 na. Look at how easy it is to take the ECO with the battery box. Okay, so with this Corksport battery box, I did have to shave this section down a bit, and I did shave some of the bottom there as well, just for clearance for the whole harness and for the intake, because this intake was rubbing against the box. And I'm very particular, and I like to make sure there's no rubbing. Um, so that's why I did it. I also have to cut one of these legs off. You'll notice there's one, two, three, but there's a missing leg here for the ECU. Eric, Not a big deal. Eric doesn't like rubbing unless he's the one doing it. Exactly. Now that we've got everything out of the way, HTP three inch intake, good for about 450 horsepower before it maxes out the master airflow sensor. Here's the turbo with the uh, very poorly modified silicone coupler. Boom. We're gonna put some uh, cement. Man, blocks. that car's jacked. Just to be safe. All right, so now we're gonna take JBR's Raider air dam off and we're gonna take the bumper off. It's always good to have a magnetic tray. It keeps things organized. Those fasteners oh. are entirely plastic and you made a comment about magnetic trays. Well, it keeps them in one spot. Yeah, a normal tray can do that. It's good for these guys right here. These guys can go wherever the hell they want. Wow, you've only had that for like, what? A month and a half and it's already rusted Watch to that is not a zinc-coated bolt, I'll tell you that much right now. How do we get rid of this now? The rust? No, this bolt. Do you have an Allen key that fits that? Yeah, I need a big-ass Allen. You got the bumper cover off now? Just jaw-dropped the Speed 3. You can see our custom radiator ducting here. This helps a lot, along with the Raiders Air Dam up oh, top. Look at that, look at how much dirt it's catching from the highway. Well, I've sprayed some wax, oh, some wax. sort of uh, rust protection wax on it, just so it lasts longer. But uh, this side we're gonna remove because the JBR piping, under out piping kit comes with a new one of these. 
Look at TR8 that. front mount intercooler core, rated to 500 horsepower, probably more. It looks nice and clean under here. We're not going to have any issues with rust or anything. There we go. All right. Inside for now. I'm going to take all these screws and bolts and put them in a nice safe spot so I don't lose them. I want this job to go as smoothly as possible. I don't want to feel the stress anymore. What did you do? Hit a chipmunk? <laughs> I don't know. That was a long time ago when I did that. Oh, that is beaten to hell, man. This undershield's been through a lot, but it functions. Looks like the Mazda's getting a little horny. Yeah, man. Okay. I got a zip tie here, so nothing rubs. It helped. But we are getting rid of this now and going with the under route piping because why not, man? Let's get all those PCV lines, man. Yep, that's for the dual catch can setup from Damien Motorsports. Both of those cans are vented though because I want as much crankcase pressure relief as possible because ever since I had issues with the BNRS4 turbo smoking, I had to do everything I could. Vented catch cans, speed performance oil breather cap. Cylinder leakage is less than 2% across all cylinders when the engine's hot, so there's no reason why I should still have issues unless there's something wrong with the turbo. We're gonna see if it gets worse. If it gets worse, I'll send the turbo into BNR to get rebuilt, and uh, maybe I'll get the new V3 with the new billet compressor wheel in there. Oh, this is tight. Yeah, there's not a lot of clearance in front of the engine, and this, these pipes get so, so heat soaked, man. Can you pull that out slowly? There we go. Look at all the room we have now without these pipes in the way. We got all the hot piping out. Now we're gonna take out the downpipe, but in order, if you look at the uh, CPE downpipe in there, you can see that the O2 sensor is very close to that alternator heat shield. It's like pretty much touching it. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the alternator heat shield. Now that the shield is out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and crack that O2 sensor loose with an O2 sensor socket. Seven eighths. O2 sensor socket. There's two connectors on that O2 sensor on the wide band. It's a lot easier to disconnect them on the top side over here where the battery used to be. And you can see they're right down here. It's a lot easier to do it from up top instead of underneath the vehicle. All right, now we're gonna disconnect the down pipe from the turbine housing with a 14 millimeter socket and extension. Let me just take a sip of my beer first. <clears throat> can you work uh, without your arms? Um, we're not at that technological, oh my god, that was loose. Maybe the solid motor mounts are shaking everything else loose. I wouldn't doubt it. I would, I would. Oh, the whole side's coming out. That's fine. If I could do this all over again, I wouldn't have spent so much money on things I didn't need. Third intake, second downpipe, second cab vac. You know? It's good to have. Second set of boost piping. <laughs> If you wanna, if you guys just bought a Mazda V3, watch the latest videos. Have have a and goal in mind. Months. Like, don't just buy parts that you're gonna end up replacing anyways. You know, have a goal. Like, what's your end goal? You know. But you learned something. That's the important thing. I spent a lot of money learning. And you had a, you had a good time uh, modifying it. That was fun. There was a lot of stress involved. Fun. Now you know. Your next car is gonna be done 100% right from the get-go. Exactly. Or you'll make the same mistakes because you're learning a new platform. But either way, it's you know, just fun. It's a hobby, man. I have this idea of like building it's a, a hobby. I wanna like build a Civic. You know. I honestly, like sometimes you just I sit there watching those Booster Boys videos and just watching those Civics. <clears throat> Something about boosting a small engine and just having it haul. It's just, it, it, it's cool. It's, yeah. It's cool. The nice thing about these engines is that they're very torquey. They have the ability to spool up a turbo nice. And they make a lot of good torque, a lot of mid-range. Okay, so now we're gonna loosen the two remaining nuts on the bottom with a stubby wrench, 14 millimeter wrench. Stubby. So if you guys wanna hear a good breakdown, here we go. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, let's loosen the, the down by bolts. Enough with the mashuga. No. Ah, did that loosen it? Or did I just slip? I don't know. We'll see. That's tight, man. Huh? Okay, give me a long one. Wow, I can't focus this camera. Do you know? Sure, it's a 14. Oh, it's so much easier when you got leverage. One more bolt left. I already got them all. Oh, that's the last one? Yeah, I just gotta remove it now. Wow. All right, guys, now we're gonna take the oil feed bolt out. Right on top of the turbo. Right there. There's the bolt. 
This is the oil restrictor bolt that was provided by uh, BNR. As you can see, it's got a very small hole there. And there as well, it's a 12 millimeter. And uh, it's to restrict the volume of oil going to the turbo to prevent smoking. So we've got the coolant feed and coolant return removed from the turbo. We've also got the oil feed line removed from the turbo. Now we just have to remove the oil drain line. Oil return is out. So now I'm removing the bracket that holds the turbo to the block itself. It's three 14 millimeter bolts. All right, so now that we've got uh, the bracket off, we're gonna disconnect, remove the nuts from the exhaust manifold to the turbine housing. There's four nuts there. One of them we might have to get with an open-ended wrench. Okay, so we uh, lower the turbo slightly. We're able to lower it with the downpipe still in the car, which is a bit tight. Um, it's just kind of sitting there, you can see it but this has given us access to uh, the exhaust manifold nuts. So now we're just gonna loosen all the exhaust manifold nuts, remove the exhaust manifold, and then lift the turbo out, and then from there we can clock it. You got the exhaust manifold out of the way. Let's put it to the side in a safe spot. What are you doing? I don't know. Let's go over here. Look at that high flowing exhaust manifold for the wind. Oh, look at all that space, man. So much room for activities. Okay, the downpipe is still getting in the way, but it's kind of wedged in there now. I gotta figure out a way to get this out, but I gotta be careful because I don't wanna get, get any debris. Ugh. This is horrible, man. I should've just taken the downpipe out. Okay, Julian, we gotta put the camera down for this. Okay, well, we got the turbo out, uh, not without injury, but he's good. Okay, guys, so now we're gonna remove the uh, wastegate actuator first. So we gotta remove this little C-clip here. So I'm gonna use a little pick, try and get it off without losing it. You lost it? Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that little guy. I'm gonna use this 10 millimeter. I want. Boost. Okay. Okay. We're gonna separate it from this bracket because we have a new bracket. Can you rotate the... There we go. That. And we're gonna remove the coolant lines so we have room to rotate the compressor housing. So we're gonna loosen this nut first. This might be a little difficult. Oh yeah, it's tight. <laughs> See if this works. Oh yeah, like a dream. This one here now. Still 17. Uh, they look the same actually. So I think we might be okay. The um, turbo normally sits like this and the manifold comes in like this. So we need to clock this compressor housing this way so it's facing down. So we're just gonna go ahead and just crack loose. All the 13s around it? All the 13s. There we go. Nice. They weren't that tight. Okay. Let's see if we can actually clock this thing now. Oh, look at that. You know, I'm kind of curious. If we take this whole compressor housing off, see what it looks like. Up to you, man. It's your turbo. <clears throat> Let's do it. Some sort of Loctite paste. White paste on it. Okay. Oh, now, be, uh, uh, pipe dope. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Wow, so this is a little seal here. We can actually probably clean this a little bit if we wanted to. So this is the V2 compressor housing. It's the V2 compressor housing, eh? It's the V2 compressor housing. Clean it off. Wow, eh? It's apparently a similar GT3076 compressor wheel. That's the new bracket on that wastegate, right? This is the bracket supplied by BNR. It's for when you want to clock your BNR turbo. It's got an elongated 
It's, it basically relocates the wastegate actuator so that it doesn't hit the compressor housing because it's wider on this side. You're gonna put all these bolts on loosely with the respective brackets and then we can sort of reposition it. So if the turbo is sitting like this inside the car, you wanna have this wastegate actuator nipple facing up. So that means on the bracket, the way it is, we're using these two holes, not these two holes. Realistically, I shouldn't have to adjust the length of this rod because the compressor side should be straight. So it should be the same as when it was on the other side. Okay, so we've got this on here. Seems okay. Once we put the C-clip in, it should fully hold it in place there. I'm gonna pop the C-clip back on now. There we go. And the C-clip should hold there. All right, so I'm gonna tighten these uh, 13s down now. I'm gonna do a star pattern. So this side and this side and continue like that until it's all tight. It's a good thing that uh, BNR provided their own bracket for if you want to clock it, it's nice. BNR provided it? Yeah, I called them, told them I wanted to clock my S4, and they send me a, uh, a different wastegate actuator bracket so it clears the compressor housing. Now we're gonna put the coolant lines back on, and we have new washers straight from Edge Auto Sport. So let's put these here. We got a couple oil crush washers and coolant crush washers here. So the two big ones are gonna be for the coolant lines. So make sure the surface is clean. We actually managed to get the socket to fit in here. Coolant return is gonna go on this side. I think it's gonna go like this because I think we still have room here for the oil drain. This boost source nipple here is now on the opposite side. It used to be right here somewhere, but now it's here. So we gotta run some line longer line around this way and up to the boost control solenoid. That back shield over there at the back right here, I might have to hammer that in a little bit more because I'm not sure if it's going to fit. So let me get a pry bar and hammer. Got to make some room there. Hopefully that'll be enough. And I'm pretty sure it sits further out now with that bracket. Each tap is $5 off the blue book value. Okay, so before we even put it in, we just realized that there was a lot of tension here on the arm connecting to the wastegate arm here on the rod. Okay, so what we did was we took the wastegate actuator back out, bent the rod a little bit down this way, and then flattened this out so it's more flush with the actual arm. So there's, there's a lot, it's a lot better now. There's, there's a lot less tension on it. We got the turbo just sitting in there. It was a pain in the ass to put in with the downpipe in the way. Put a little piece of tape on the uh, oil feed hole, just in case. A bit of a tight fit. Kinda have to go in upside down. Okay, that is in place. I'm gonna start these 14 mil nuts now. This is the um, extra coolant hose that is provided with the uh, under out piping kit. And what I did was I took it and I went underneath the car and I found out just exactly how much I need to cut for the coolant return uh, go coming out of the turbo and then going back into the cooling system. So it was this one, I believe, which is the longer one. And whatever's left over, we can actually use that um, to extend this coolant feed right here. As you can see, I removed the stock coolant feed line. I've installed the new cut one from the hose provided. And they also provide you with uh, four of these little hose clamps. So I've just finished tightening this down. Now I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna put the other hose clamp on the other end of this hose and uh, I'm gonna tighten it down to the coolant feed on the turbo here. You see that coolant line right there, right in the middle of the screen? That is the coolant feed line for the turbo, and that was provided by JBR. Um, yep, yeah, that one right there. And uh, you just have to cut it to length for the coolant feed and the coolant return. So right now we're gonna go underneath the car, and we're gonna show you exactly how all the piping is, is plumbed and routed. There's the pipe coming out of the turbo. It goes along the side of the oil pan right there. It goes along the front right there and then goes into the intercooler core. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but this is the drive shaft right here. You can see that the piping coming out of the S4 gets a little bit close to the shaft, but it clears just enough because the, uh, the actual silicone coupler actually just rests on the casing, preventing the pipes from actually touching the shaft. You can see the outlet of the turbo right there. So that's the coolant return line right there. And you can see, if we look closely, it wraps really tight around the compressor housing. This was making it very difficult to clock the turbo backwards. Um, but with patience, you can actually just get it to a certain angle 
and manipulate the JBR under oak piping so that it clears everything. So here's the oil pan. You can see the piping and how it runs. I ended up having to zip tie it right here to the uh, right, right front wheel well splash shield because the clamp that's provided instructs you to uh, mount it to the stud on the timing cover. So it lifts it too high and then the piping ends up contacting the drive shaft. So that becomes an issue. So I ended up just to keep it in place, I just zip tied it to here and it's worked perfectly fine.